Hello everyone and welcome to match number 11 of the Glimmer Gauntlet, our final match before Championship Saturday. We have Adara running Ruby Amethyst and then Eric running Ruby Emerald. Uh, my name is Teddy and I'm joined by Whippet or as uh, he may be known on the online, Martin. Uh, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing fine. Hi, Teddy. How are you? I'm great. I'm really excited to see this matchup too. Uh, Ink combinations that could have been seen going this far. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but Eric actually got through to the second round due to Pavel not being able to uh, continue in the tournament. So Eric actually lost his round one matchup, but is now here in round two. It's pretty interesting to see that uh, play out, and we'll see how that plays out now. Yeah, sometimes luck is involved in playing tournaments. So we wish both the best luck mm -hmm. in their game anyways. And I know a little bit about Eric. Um, so he's writing and so on. So he's very into Lorcana. Mm -hmm. So I think he deserved a second chance yeah. to play in any case. But Adara, she's well known to anybody who's in Lorcana as well. So. I think she's a hard contestant to getting the win in this game. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how this goes. Uh, for those who may not know what the gauntlet is, uh, this is our Glimmer Gangs charity tournament. We are putting this on 15 different competitors. We are now nearly down to four at this point that have chosen a charity. They play all the way through, and if they win, all the money we have raised goes to their charity of choice. Uh, I'm really excited about this. Uh, two different uh, ink combinations. One, we saw Eric more aggro -y style, and then Adara, obviously, Ruby Amethyst. She didn't have all the Ruby Amethyst pieces, but Whippet, what do you think about this matchup? Is Adara going to be able to keep up with Eric's uh, aggro, or is Adara going to be able to control the board? It's hard to evaluate because there's a lot of um, cards missing to the control side of um, Ruby, like all the super rare removal tools. And you Ruby just cut out. Emerald. You just cut out. So oh. if you want to start that, you can. Oh. Again, again. So I don't know, because Ruby is missing out a lot of the um, control tools in the super rare um, slot. And Ruby Emerald is like very hard on the evasive side, which can sneak on wins like um, no other color combination, mm -hmm. I think. But it depends a little bit if there's a Be Prepared Drawn, which is a rare card. So this is in the mix. We will have to see, but it should be a close match. Yeah, I'm excited to start. Uh, we're going to get this going. Uh, Adara has chosen to go first. Uh, she inks a goat, uh, which is an interesting ink turn one. And then plays Maleficent down and passes to Eric. Pretty normal turn one for Ruby Amethyst, if you think about it. Yeah, but she's um, with this Maleficent on turn one. She's on the aggro side more mm -hmm. than I expected um, yeah, to see true. from her. So it could be putting a lot of pressure on Eric. Yeah, uh, he inks and then plays a Zazu down. Uh, we saw in round one, He's playing a very location-heavy deck. So that Zazu, obviously, if it moves and quests at a location, is getting plus one lore. It'll be interesting to see if that is able to survive and get those benefits. Yeah, if it survives, it can put up a lot of work getting three lore mm -hmm. by questing. Uh, we see a so Adara um, inked Pascal. She um, quests with the Maleficent, getting two lore. And now there's... LeFou, ready, ready back up. up. Yeah, so now she's protected. That's very good for mm -hmm. her. Depends on what Eric can do here. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, because obviously uh, he has, like we've said, a lot of aggro, but he also has a lot of choices. And he has to think very, because he knows once he gets into that three ink, four ink range, he's going to start seeing those foxes and those uh, rabbits and those goats come down from Adara. So lots of uh lots of things he has to be wary of and let leaving his characters uh re unready or exerted uh, during his turn yeah, and that's why he's taking his time to think about his play he um inked a f the fang yeah. um, location and now he played um the enchantress as i can see it correctly yeah. 
So that's at least something to put on mm -hmm. against the aggression. And you think he's uh, deciding if he wants to quest uh, with anything. Doesn't look like it passes back to Adara. So I'm guessing he maybe has a location in his hand if he's not uh, questing with that Zazu. Uh, possibly keeping that uh, little bird safe for a turn. Yeah, I think so. He's looking for his location to get down. I think next turn we will see some birdie action. So Adara is really going on the aggressive side here. Uh, against Eric, probably knowing that he is playing aggro and she has to keep up at five lore uh, and plays that Simba. Yeah, and there's another three lore that is um, troubling Eric. And then Befuddles, what is she going to target? Targets the Enchantress back into the hand. Yeah, because she can yeah, put out anything on her board. So now it will be interesting to see how Eric can keep up or if he is already struggling. Exactly. Getting right now has third ink. Six lore on board. I'm guessing that Zazu right now has to take out the Maleficent. Uh, just because Eric doesn't want to fall too far behind. Pays the three for Surfer Mini, so uh, evasive there. Yeah, but the Surfer Mini serves more purpose than just being evasive because she has one strength that can get rid of any of the high questing mm -hmm. characters and is protected against the counter attack. Yeah. So it's kind of a very good card in this yeah. um, particular situation. And we see that Zazu run into the Maleficent. Not really surprising. If Eric wants to be able to stay in this game, that was something he had to do. Adara still, for Laura on board, is going to take a 9 to nothing lead, I would think, uh, at the end of this turn. Yeah, but she's low on cards. That is true. And a snake, interesting. Are you going to see uh, Rabbit come down? Oh, okay. The Queen's Castle. That's going to be interesting because Eric doesn't have many high willpower characters uh, that'll help take that out. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, this is just like the perfect um, card yeah. she could play in this situation. Next turn she can draw maybe. It's yeah. really good for her. Yeah. And doesn't quest with Eric... Simba. There. Okay. The bounced enchantress goes into the inkwell. And now what's Eric doing? Definitely thinking. Oh, plays his own location, RLS Legacy. Uh, that'll be in the two uh, cards are going to slowly gain passive lore. It kind of just depends on who can clear the other person's board state at the end of uh, quickly. And then those can race to the top. Yeah. From what we see now, Adara is in the lead position but mm -hmm. there may be just one card that may change the situa situation i don't see how many cards eric has in his hand but i suppose he has still a f two more one, yeah four five six played seven so far he's taken four turns that's 11 so yeah, so yeah should a few more two or that. three yeah But Adara is having a big lead. Mm -hmm. She's at eight lore, probably four more, and she can draw cards. There's nothing that can put out LeFou at the moment, so she can draw a card from this one. The Simba is um, challengeable. Yeah. She goes to 11. Really hard for Eric now. Oh, he's for sure feeling the heat. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Obviously, that Simba won't survive another turn. Uh, she sings uh, to ready uh, Simba, uh, which is interesting, and then gains two more from uh, writing a character to location. That is a very clutch play there. For sure it is. And then and bounces, bounces LeFou, Simba's ready, and then puts four into the location, I would assume, and then passes back to Eric. What a turn. Yeah, she's 
securing almost for sure three more lore from the Simba up to 16, getting two more from the location, which I don't think um, Eric has anything in his back to remove it. So she's really getting hard into the game and Eric is just struggling to keep up. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. All right, Adara has full control of the game right now. Eric, another location. He has at four right now from our last. Goes up to six with the mini. Mother's knows best. The Simba back to Adara's hand. With those two okay, locations. This, this is going to be interesting. Goes up to yeah, 15. Yeah. Okay, she, at least he got rid of three immediate lore. Yeah. So he's kind of a little bit back in the game, but still, Adara is in a, quite a leading position. Mm. Let's see what she plays. She has the Simba in hand and one card she just drew from the pile. So let's see what she has. She's going to take out the legacy with uh, Madame Mim. So. Uh, an obvious play there, kind of slow Eric down. Don't want four lore coming across uh, in one turn at the start of his next turn. She has some options. Looks like she has two or three cards in her hand. Plays LeFou to ready, and then put four more into uh, the other legacy that is there. It seems like Eric isn't recovering although it looked quite okay at the end of his last yeah. turn. It goes up to eight, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Unless, yeah, because yeah. yeah, you would have to have a genie, or genie's a super, never mind, wrong rarity. Uh, if you can find a way to bounce something, Mother's knows best. Uh, just plays another legacy, plays a Simba, quest for two to go to ten, but that is looking that is like... Is going to be a Dara with the commanding uh, game one win. Quest with Simba to go to 20. That was a trouncing, if I've ever seen one. Just very quick, got out early, very aggressive start. Uh, and that is what a Dara wanted to do, especially in this matchup. Yeah, for sure. But it shows that um, Ruby Amethyst is not only about control, but it can push out some quick lore as well yeah uh we're gonna take a quick break uh we'll be right back for game two see if adara can close this out or is eric gonna send it to game three all right everyone we are back for game two obviously eric losing game one gets to choose and i'm guessing he's gonna go first inks a zazu and then plays a cursed merfolk i think the immediate That's pressure a on adara strong opener yeah that card Especially, even though Adara does have access to a lot of draw, still is very detrimental to a hand state if you don't have the ability to replenish it. Yeah, this is one of the strongest cards I think we saw in set three. Mm -hmm. And it's the perfect opener for every Emerald deck, I think. Yeah. And even in, like, in Constructed or in this format, it just does wonders to be able to uh, help one get lore quickly for him but also limit what your opponent is having in their hand yeah now adara is um getting her turn she inks a snake and gets out a, Pas a pascal so she at least can contest it but to what price mm -hmm. <laughs> to the price of discarding a card maybe that's not what you want to have for your first few turns and now Eric is putting the pedal to the metal, getting the Enchantress out. Another two lore quester. Yeah. That's really a good start for the Emerald Ruby deck. Dar is thinking because obviously has the pressure on her now to deal with Eric's board. Probably considering what to discard because if I were me, I wouldn't want to leave uh, four lore out there. Yeah, she sure is. Now she discards a Pongo. 
expensive card, mm -hmm. which doesn't help her too much in this situation. Discards and Pascal, now... but Pascal should not have been discarded there. Merfolk does no damage. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. And there, I think that they've realized that she brings it back out. Um... And that's fair play from Eric's side, uh, getting her the information that Pascal is still living. Mm -hmm. That's all about it, the fair play, and that's what we want to see in a charity event. Oh, yeah, 100%. Inks a mini here. If she can get a character down, that Pascal stays evasive. Doesn't, has no issues. And you see a Simba come down, so obvious. And you see that aggressive nature from Adara's deck. Really yeah, now, trying to race Eric. Yeah, now Eric is again in the position. There are two characters on board. He cannot interact with any one of those. He just can put on pressure, and that's everything yeah. he's choosing to do also, as we see. Early 4 nothing lead for Eric, but Adara can come right back in one turn. Uh, but... Eric does have the ability to take out our characters if she does so choose to quest. A snake yeah, no, or a it's... fox here to protect that Simba wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Oh, yeah. But she inked one snake already in the first turn, so we have to see what she's up to. Mm -hmm. Inks are the foo. Oh, this is interesting, inking the LeFou, which could help her protecting her characters, but maybe she has something even better in hand. So uh, She takes out the Enchantress with Pascal. Interesting. Quests for three with Simba. And then for three, plays oh, friends on the other no. side to draw two. I would okay. have liked to see the LeFou come down there and protect that Simba. Uh, you know, Simba. Yeah, maybe she has some inkable card um, lacking in her hand. But it, it's an interesting take. Um, I would have liked the LeFou as well. That's why I said interesting. She should have something even better. Mm -hmm. Because she's now the one that is pressured. But we will see. I'm sure she has something on her mind that will surprise us. Yeah. Now Eric has an opening to uh, really take a commanding lead here. Plays down uh, Tinkerbell, which is another evasive character. Like you said in the opener, this deck has access to so many different evasives. And it'll be interesting to see how Adara deals with that. Yeah, and what I already said, the mini can take out all these one one high lore questing characters and is on the other side protected that helps him now a lot when mm -hmm. he's in the commanding position of the game yeah for two you see another simba come down for another two you see pinocchio so that is a <laughs> lot of lore on the board yeah but both um characters suffer from the same problem yeah. they can be taken out by the evasive characters and eric can just get them for free mm -hmm. they quest once but um otherwise he keeps his characters and can still keep on questing while adara is losing the card advantage little well, by little there's kit cloud kicker to bounce oh, one of them back and then he can just quest for four, go to eight, and no. now a Jeez, commanding board really. presence. Yeah, that's looking rough for Adara. Just like um, switched around situations from the first game where it was Adara giving all the pressure to Eric, and now it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Adara finds a way to claw back here. No. It will be interesting to see what's um, happening in game three when Adara is already uh, again on the play because yeah. those aggro decks want to be on the play. And for that reason, Adara seems to have the advantage because she has two times being on the play in the best of three. This could be 
if she now loses um a big advantage for her side yeah so ink or plays the uh, queen's castle gonna get some passive lore but then again if she quests with the simba that thing's gonna be taken out i would probably say buy the kit just be in eric can quest for four more lore um and he can just ignore the castle and quest his own guys and mm -hmm. taking the lore lead even further because he's getting four and the dara will only get two by the castle yeah inking surfer mini is she gonna use the one to play something seems like it so we have to wait what she's deciding on see maleficent come down so still has a lot of lore on board but it'll be interesting to see if it's too late yeah but this is i think the situation we had um before that she inked the um lefou because mm -hmm. she had a lot of uninkable cards in her hand and was choosing to get um more lore in uh, more ink in despite being a little bit on the disadvantage by that play and we see the legacy come down on Eric's turn. He uses the kit to take out the Simba and then quests for four with Tinkerbell and Minnie, commanding 12 to th uh, 8 lead right now. Uh, and I say commanding because while Adara does have Maleficent, a lot of four lore on board, Eric just has so much more lore on board. Right yeah, it's now. seven if I'm counted correctly. Mm -hmm. So he will be at 19 at least by the end of next turn if it stays like this yeah. so he should be in to win this game but the game isn't over until you are at 20 lore so exactly. we have to see what andara can do to put on the fight i would you would think with adara having the access to ruby be prepared but i think it she's just, i might be too late for that uh Plays the Pinocchio, plays another Maleficent, moves uh, Pinocchio, and then moves Maleficent to the Queen's Castle. Goes to 10. She now has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah. 7, 8, 9. She has... 10. No. She yeah, didn't... she um, she's showing 10 lore. Oh, yeah? No, uh, she's showing or, 9. No, 9, 9, 9. Okay, so I miscounted. I thought the one Maleficent were Simba, but I think it is in the end very close. <laughs> there's the mother's nose best. Uh, gets rid of the Pinocchio. Sings another mother's nose best with Minnie to send the other uh, Maleficent right back to her hand. No drawing from the Queen's Castle. Quests for three to go to 17 um uh, and now adara is stuck in a spot where she only has one character on board and can't really do much about it there's nothing that could help her if she would she plays a be prepared she's one ink short of it yeah and there's i think no card combination that can do what she needs to do if, at five ink so goes to 14 sadly for her it's just a lost cause yeah the 19 quests for the game like game one whoever got out to the quick early lead uh won the game whoever went first adar will be going first in game three and like you said martin this is going to be interesting to see if she can do exactly what she did game one and just get out to that early quick lead before eric can catch up but I think going second, Eric had, from what we saw right now, has the better deck mm -hmm. because he can at least put on some pressure by disrupting, like with a kit cloud kicker with a mother knows best. So he has options to slow down the beginning player and maybe claw back into this aggro matchup. Yeah, well, we will see who wins in game three. We're going to take another break and we'll be right back. All right, we are back for the third and final match or round game in this match. Winner of this will go on to championship Saturday. Uh, lots to play for here, Martin. Uh, 
we see a three drop Maleficent uh, inked by Adara to play a baby Maleficent and a pass. I'm getting deja vu to game one, exactly how she started that game. Yeah, it's all putting on the pressure, questing for quick lore with these small, uninkable characters. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see how Eric is able to answer and... Exactly what he did game one. Uh, <laughs> play Zazu turn one. Um, so did we just have a deja vu or... Yeah, is, I, th is I think we did. Again, I think we did. I, I think honestly, this is what you want. Dara, uh, and it, that, I think that's exactly what she did game one too. This yeah, is yeah, it is. Insane. Okay, so... No, um, if she's doing it again, and Eric as well, she will win the game. The Fang, or I, Fang, um, was inked in the first game as well. This is so. What's going just on here right now? <laughs> repeat all over again. So crazy, seeing the exact cards. Eric has to think now. An enchantress. What is going on right now? This is this is crazy. This is a carbon <laughs> copy of game one. <laughs> Oh my. So if it's continuing like this, it looks very grim for Eric. I hope we will see more of a game and a more of a struggle. Yeah. Uh, will, this, will we see the Simba come down on turn three from Adara? That would be really interesting. Pascal gets inked. Now the tension. Can feel it. Perfect deja vu, or are we gonna see something different? Okay, now we Two. see the plane. Oh no, we're not gonna see something different. Oh, never mind. There is the Simba. Wow, what is? And then she just quests with both of them. We go to five. This is gnarly. Oh, and then plays Fan the Flames for one to ready the most, and that is the first new thing we've seen. Okay, we are not in the same game, guys. Yeah. <laughs> there is differences to this. Eric now uh, inks another Fang for three. Plays Surfer Mini. Zazu takes out LeFou. Enchantress quests for two. Passing back to Adara. And now with the mini again, it looks better for Eric. Yeah. Because she can deal with anything on the board. And Adara also has to choose if she likes the Enchantress being on the board or not. I'm thinking she probably wants him to run into her more than her running into him right now. Just because she does have a pretty... Uh, nice lore value on the board. We'd like to see him stop uh, gaining lore. But we ha with her inking that goat there, it kind of reminds me. We haven't seen her play a goat yet, which is interesting. Uh, but she just chooses to quest, goes to 10. For three, plays a fox to bring the Simba back to her hand. This is an interesting situation because now the Enchantress can contest the Fox. Yeah. So we have to see if she chooses to um, get it before the Enchantress gets two more lore or if she just chooses to um, let the Fox stay on the board. And she chooses yeah. to let her stay. I like that decision. Um, yeah. I would have liked to see her bring back the Maleficent instead of the Simba, even though there is that lore difference. She could have just played that Maleficent right back down ready uh, instead of and had three characters on the board instead of uh, now, probably at the end of this turn, only having Madame and Fox. So, uh, yeah, you're right. The mini, I'm guessing, is going to take up the Maleficent, yeah. That's Eric's turn to shift, uh, turn the tides here, see if he can cl come back in this game and will he quest with the enchantress i think it would be good to quest because the fox is yeah not doing much harm if he doesn't quest the fox can just quest for free see so inks of the foo we're in 
in location range right now, but I don't think that's what he's going to be doing. Mothers knows best the fox. That's a smart play, but because she can play it down, the the play you suggested before with the Maleficent on the board now looks even better. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is starting to get interesting here. Dara is left with nothing on board. Martin, or not Martin, you're Martin. Uh, Eric is not for Laura, also clustering with the uh, Enchantress. Two for Pinocchio, two for Simba. That's... Yeah, she realized she just has to get Laura because Eric claws back into the game. Uh huh. And he's played him. It'll be interesting because he had he's played another Mother's No. He's played one Mother's Knows Best already, without much draw at his hand. He's kind of just forced to play what he has in his hand and what he's able to draw. Yeah, a kid cloud kicker could be very detrimental for Adara right now if he would be able to throw something like that. Yeah. So it's really good to see a very tense match three mm -hmm. in this very interesting games we see, we've seen so far. Yeah. What will Eric do? This feels like a very pivotal moment. In yeah, the he's game. taking his time, and it's like you said, it's very crucial now to make the right decision mm -hmm. so come on eric we are all call, sweating here already gonna call a judge slow play just kidding uh, <laughs> looks like he's just going first thing he's gonna do is quest with the enchantress to go to six two to play bounce oh there you go Sending the Enchantress back, and then uh, Dara will have to send one of hers back. She uses Pinocchio. Um, now Eric can just play that Enchantress right back down if he wants to. Yeah, she's protected. That's a very good play. Even though um, I don't think Dara would have traded his Simba, no. uh, her Simba, with the Enchantress. But maybe he has an even better card in hand. This was a Ray, I think. Inks, some ink something. He has access to three ink now. He quests or he sings mother's knows best. Put the he has had those in his pocket this whole time and has been really cool to see. Plays enchantress after singing it, and Adara is now left with everything that she just played right back in her hand, and Eric is too lower closer. Really interesting. These mother knows best doing some work in this matchup. Yeah. Oh, he, he's at six or eight lore. I can't see it exactly. Uh, he's at six at the moment. Okay. And Just... Alara is where she was like the last turn. Yeah. What can Eric do now? five plays that ray another evasive character goes to 10 we are now tied he has seven on board no he has six yeah seven she is six um very interesting yeah and he even can take out both characters without losing one of his own yeah those evasives will just take him out and he just has to play something out yeah it, Use the mini and the ray to take out Pinocchio and Simba, quest with Enchantress, and just play another character. And if Adara can't do anything to protect these guys, then it'll be interesting to see what happens. For Adara, we hope she has something like the Madame M. Fox or Madame M. Snake to protect one of her high lore characters. Yeah. That would be really clutch. Ink some Maleficent. So, some big plays coming for five ink. She quests to go to 16. Three for the fox to bring Pinocchio back. Oh no. Tra trades with the Enchantress. I don't know. 
if I like that play. We'll have to see. Yeah, but anyway, the fox cannot trade in anything else. All of the other characters have evasive, so <laughs> drops down the legacy, takes out Ooh. Simba, quests for three to go to thirteen. He now has game on board. Does Adara have goat to win? It would only be fitting. Yeah, yeah, and that's really. The only card I think that she can play if she doesn't have a uh, spell book in her deck as well. <laughs> really, really close games. Yeah, this the goat to win the game happened in a round one match. We know she's inked one already at the start. And it doesn't seem like because yeah. this would be a immediate play. Yeah. She's now looking at the board if she can do anything. She cannot take out the uh, legacy. That's for sure. Quest to go to Gets 19. 19. Two, three. Plays Fox. I guess puts four into the legacy. Simba. But that looks oh. like it is it. Goes to 15 with the legacy. Wow. Eric did it. What a clutch game. 20 to 19. That's, That's why I think true. if she had if she had left that Madame Mim Fox a lie instead of taking out the Enchantress, that would yeah, have been game. Yeah, she could game. have taken out the Legacy. <sighs> Maybe this would have been better for her. Yeah, I don't know. Small but... decisions that yeah. decide the game. Yeah, but we're going to see Eric uh, moving on to Championship Sunday to join Liam, Jacob, and Blake uh, for solid players for a very uh popular men's community uh obviously eric playing uh his red green blake is playing purple green and then we have uh jacob playing sapphire steel and then liam playing amethyst steel thoughts on these four matchups going into saturday these four got players going into saturday these are some rough color combinations i, <laughs> I think um I like a lot um, the steel color, so I'm a little bit biased. I think Liam has a very good combination of card draw and removal for this kind of format with the Amethyst Seal. Sapphire can always take games with ramping up and being, uh, playing um, big characters. So I think anybody has a chance on winning because, as we saw, the um, evasive characters can put on a lot of work. Emerald Amethyst... Yeah, it's also a good color combination for putting on aggressive plays mm -hmm. with bouncing back um, early game play. So this one can sneak also some wins. I think anybody has a chance on winning. There's no clear favorite, especially in this kind of format where we are lacking all these super rare and legendary yeah. cards. Yeah. Very interesting format. Yeah, the Risen Lower definitely... Uh does something to you as a player, makes you think more. Uh, but congratulations to Eric on winning, on taking this match. Whip it. Where can everyone find you online? Uh, what's Twitter? Yeah. yeah, where can you find you? It's easy. Anyone can find me under whip it underscore place on all platforms where I'm present. Um, yeah, it's as easy as that. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, you guys can all find me at TeddyTCGs on Twitter. Uh, but that was the final match of rounds one and two. We now have our final four set. Like I said, Liam, Jacob, Blake, and Eric will be duking it out this Saturday. Uh, make sure you guys are tra checking the Glimmer Gang Twitter for the uh, updates on timing for that day. Uh, but yeah, we hope you all enjoyed. Uh, make sure you guys do click the donate button down below. Anything is uh, appreciated. We want to try to make this a great event. But that was the final match. We hope you all enjoyed and Gloomer on.